Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Popcorn Podcast with Lee and Tim, where we're bringing you a special interview episode with the one and only Lashana Lynch about her new film, Bob Marley, One Love. I'm Timmy Fland, movie buff. And I'm Lee Livingstone, entertainment journalist. And we love to talk all things movies. We do. And here's a bit about Bob Marley, One Love. It's a biopic set in the 1970s, around the time of the famous musician and political activist's performance at the historic Smile Jamaica concert, as well as covering his departure from Jamaica after an assassination attempt and the eventual London recording of his iconic album, Exodus. Bob Marley, One Love is directed by Ronaldo Marcus Green, who's previously brought us such films as Joe Bell and King Richard. It's from a screenplay by Terence Winter, Frank E. Flowers, Zach Balin and Ronaldo Marcus Green. Bob Marley, One Love stars Kingsley Ben Adir, Lashana Lynch, Anthony Welsh and James Norton. Miss Honey. Mm. Izogi. Yes. 007 Nomi. Yes. Maria Rambo. Yes. <laughs> British actor Lashana Lynch has brought us some of the toughest, coolest characters in film of recent times. That's right. Girl power may be attributed to her fellow countrywomen, the Spice Girls, <laughs> but Lashana Lynch is carrying that torch and fanning those flames, baby. And now she inhabits real life legend Rita Marley in this biopic about Jamaican superstar Bob Marley. Rita Marley is an acclaimed singer, songwriter, author and activist in her own right, so much more than Bob Marley's widow. She was given an order of Jamaica for her contributions to music Mm. and culture, in fact. Yeah, and there can be a bias that sometimes comes with biopics, right, where family are so heavily involved in production and Marley's Mm. children and Rita are producers on this film and work on the soundtrack, of course. It's a double-edged sword because you can get such great insight and authenticity with biopics but then it sometimes shies away from hard conversations about the person because you know they're so loved obviously Mm. but Bob Marley aside there's no denying Rita is an incredible woman and the absolute backbone of this family and the music. Now in understanding more about her as the backbone of the family and the music in a special interview with Popcorn Podcast Lynch reveals how she brought Rita's quiet strength and eternal but complicated love for Bob Marley to the screen. The challenge of finding confidence in these kick-ass roles she has played throughout the years, some of which we mentioned earlier, and which film has brought her the most joy Mm. recently. Let's take a listen. Redemption song. When you write that? All my life. Thank you so much for your time today. We really appreciate it. Rita Marley, such an iconic woman and an accomplished musician in her own right. Her story is so deeply intertwined with Bob, though, and and her children. But what do you admire about Rita and what drew you to the role? I genuinely admire everything about Rita (laughs) and learning who she is, what she comes with in terms of a presence, what she adds to the room the energy and the spirituality that she harnessed so greatly and has right now as though it's no time has passed at all is something that's really stuck with me. Every time I think of her, I think of her energy first and playing her, that's how I approached, I guess, the characterizing of what everyone, you know, who doesn't know Rita Marley is going to learn her to be, her energy, her presence. And I'd like to think that in scenes where she was present, even if she wasn't saying something, you're going to feel her. And I think that that's, that's who she is at her core. She has this really powerful force of an energy that isn't loud. It's actually quite peaceful and, and quite small in volume, but loud in, in feeling. A quite strength, I guess. Quite strength, yeah. And a, and yeah. a vulnerability also that she was able to to balance out, which was special to get to know also. Were you able to spend much time with Rita and, and get to know her during filming? Yeah, it, just before filming, actually, I went to her house, which is always weird to say that I went to Rita Marley's house to hang out with her <laughs> um, on a couple of occasions. And we laughed, we joked, we broke breads. You know, her dog was there. Just like we really chilled as just two human beings just appreciating each other. And in that moment, 
the first time that I met her, I thought, wow, she's just a wonderful woman. It's just really nice to just be able to spend time with wonderful women who have wonderful intentions, who, you know, have always been a wonderful person, who loves people, loves creating, loves giving wisdom, receiving wisdom. She very much so seems like a a woman who, no matter how young, you have something to teach me. You have wisdom to impart on me, even though I'm older. You know, she's harnessed so much and it's just, she just seems so at peace with mm. with the life and the world. And it's really admirable, you know, going through the journey that she has. So yeah, once in a lifetime on a, on a do- opportunity to be with her. Yeah. And speaking of wonderful women, your films carry such important messages of female empowerment. I'm not sure whether that's strategic or whether it's an accident, but, you know, Woman King and Captain Marvel, obviously, um, even 007 taking on the first female to to take on that mantle and even Miss Honey, I guess, from Matilda too. Very, very strong woman. What boxes does a role have to tick to get you on board? Such a good question. I have to firstly question if I'm able to do it. Even if I know I'm able to do it, I enjoy that there's something in the back of my mind that challenges me to have to get over a hill to achieve said thing. And it doesn't matter how many people are telling me the role is perfect for you and oh my gosh, you're going to kill it and can't wait. Gosh, you can do that standing on your head. I know that in the back of my head, I can't. (laughs) I can't. (laughs) And going from, I can't, I can possibly to I've got this is a really enjoyable journey for me. So I I like that. And, And yes, in answer to what you'd said before, it is intentional to have all of these roles really mean something for us as women. I decided quite early on that, I wasn't going to be typecast. I wasn't going to play the same role twice unless it like felt called to. And I wasn't going to allow anything from disrupting the flow of what femininity should be and how we should redefine it in cinema. I was going to take control of what I know I can do and the, I guess, responsibility that I have as an artist and really take it one step further and push the needle forward into somewhere that makes sense for me as a woman in the world. Speaking of pushing it further, obviously we know you can sing and you have a fantastic voice, but how did you approach the accent work for this one? So my parents are Jamaican. We only spoke Patwa in in the house. So that was that was there, though I did really need to do my research because one thing I realised I had never done is speak in a Jamaican accent in the way that Rita spoke, which is very light, very, like I said, peaceful. She actually has a peaceful voice, especially when Mm -hmm. she was younger, really like in tune with herself. There was kind of like a a dance that her vocals go through when she speaks or something that I hadn't been able to do before. And outside of Miss Honey, none of my characters that I played have been liked. (laughs) They've all been, you know, quite, determined and and strong and and powerful and she has power in a different way that was new for me and I found that through my voice and through the accent I had to find this different part of myself that I hadn't actually visited before and we had great dialect coaches that also doubled up as um, (laughs) life coaches when you questioned if you were able to do something or not on set on the fly and it was it was just a beautiful journey in finding a voice that represented her that wasn't a caricature that also sounded like it was coming from my mouth. And the Mali legacy obviously has such a huge cultural significance globally. Um, that goes without saying, but was there anything you were surprised to learn about Rita and Bob and the family behind what we all know? A lot of things, some of which actually I decided early on that I was just going to leave that as as information for me to just understand her more to understand them more so that I could ensure that the journey that I'm taking is the most authentic one and I found a lot of peace in that there's a love that the Bob and Rita that we learn in the film that there's a love that is just different it's that kind of like very much so movie like love if you just take that just the feeling of them of how they felt for each other really early on in their relationship that's a quality that I heard felt and witnessed when I met her for the first time that yeah. mentioning of Bob's name I don't know if she was aware of this but she kind of went back into this um 
teenage type of love or like school child type love mm-hmm. where you've met a boy and you don't know if he likes you and you don't know if you're going to see him yeah. again and it's all very sweet <laughs> like I didn't know with playing strong women you know we don't often get the chance to see where their vulnerability lies and how where their sweetness comes from and how people make them feel and how love makes them feel that's something that's almost like missing within love stories sometimes yeah. in cinema I just found that 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 sweet quality was something to really delve into and really harness in like the argument scene, for example, that on the surface, it might look like just people shouting each other. But really underneath that is I love the bones of this man. I just happen to not really like him in this moment. Yeah, that that truly eternal love really came across on the screen. So congratulations and thank you for your performance. Just before I go, we're all about celebrating the joys of cinema here at Popcorn Podcast. Can you share a moment in a film that you've seen or an experience at the cinema that stayed with you and brought you joy? Big question. There's so <laughs> Yeah, it is. It's hard to pick one, isn't it, when you... <laughs> Hard. You know, the first thing, because um, we, I was just talking about love and complicated love and especially black and brown women being able to really have the broad spectrum of love, like the full relationship and, and what it means and what you, the challenges you go through in relationships. Past Lives just came to mind. I loved that movie. I think that Greta is one of the most, like I could cry just like, oh, she's just such, she's so delicious yeah. to watch. I, I cried. I loved the performances. I loved how complicated it was. I loved how I felt torn in different moments. It literally like swung me from wall to wall. And I love when a movie, it really challenges me to stay on side with someone. Like I didn't know who to bat for at any given yeah. time. I was so immersed in in that journey. And it's those kinds of movies that make me feel grateful to be a performer, to be able to like, make audiences feel that like it's so emotional it's such an emotional visceral reaction to performances like that so yeah I would just say the title of Greta in past lives yes please thank you <laughs> perfect choice thank you Lashana so much for your time it was really a great honor having you with us thank you thank you so much sometimes the messenger has to become the message What an honor to have Lashana Lynch join us on the show and give such wonderful insights into Rita and the process of bringing her to the screen in this way. I just loved chatting with her. It was a career highlight for sure. And it must be daunting for an actor to portray a real life person and one with such gravitas. Mm. But I'll tell you what, Lynch knocked it out of the park. As she said, she chooses her roles with purpose. Mm. And I can't wait to see the next kick-ass thing that she does. Me too. No (laughs) doubt kick-ass it will be. And we want to see her back as Maria Rambo. Absolutely we do. Especially after the end credit scene in the Marvels. Marvels. I know. (sighs) Bring her back, bring her back. The tease, baby, the tease. She said she she doesn't return to the same roles unless they call to her, but. Yeah, right. obviously Maria Rambo is calling to her and all of us. <laughs> <laughs> yes, loud and clear. <laughs> Don't forget to check out the video of this interview over on our YouTube channel, friends, and hit that subscribe button while you're there, please. We really appreciate it. We sure do. And Bob Marley One Love is available to rent or own on digital from March 28. That's another special episode of Popcorn Podcast in the can. That's right, baby. Thank you so much for listening, guys. We'll catch you next time. We are now on YouTube where you will find our latest celebrity video interviews. Simply search Popcorn Podcast with Lee and Tim and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a thing.